So first we're going to open that Excel document with the data sets. If you go to the second page, um, this is what a real data set would look like. For the experiment, we're going to be using a condensed version um, to speed up time. Obviously, you can see there's a lot of data present. Go back to the first page. Um, so for each column, we are going to be, um, which each column corresponds to one data microarray experiment. We're going to calculate the mean value using the average Excel function and verify that that value obtained is equal to zero. And we'll do it for each column, which as you'll see, they're not equal to zero. Right now there's a log base 2 ratio, and we're going to get rid of that pretty soon. So the table on, on the right there that's not filled out will be entering our data in there. So we're going to subtract the average value for each column from the corresponding individual values. Um, for example, this will be um, one value minus the average value for the column. And this will normalize our data. And we can just we can put money signs in there and get it to hold that average cell, drag it down, and we have our normalized data, and then we will um, do that for each column, each value as well. Continue to center the data for each column, uh, filling in the blank table to the right, again using the average function at the end of the columns when you've completed this data. going to change those um, money value columns quick so it corresponds to the correct average value from the previous table. Now we should just be able to grab the small box in the lower right hand corner of each uh, cell and copy that, that uh, formula. So be careful if there are missing values or empty cells and replace the empty, empty contents with the null, capital N, capital U, capital L, capital L, or um, capital NA command in order to avoid inducing a zero value in Excel calculations in the cell. Um, a missing value is definitely different than a null one. We shouldn't have any problems in this experiment though. Also know the difference between a dot or a comma in Excel because there is a difference. So now we'll go and create those average values like I said and they should be um, right in that zero range which means we've taken away that log base two. We've normalized our data. So once you've normalized the data file, uh, you can filter out weak intensity spots, which eliminate the weakest intensities for both channels. Uh, keep spot with ratio greater than 1 or lower than negative 1. And remember that we're working with log base 2 ratio. So log base 2 to the 2 is equals to 1, and this method is called fold change. Um, it's the one used at the beginning of microarray analysis and is still useful um, if you don't have enough replicate, replicates to apply statistical treatments. The fold change method lacks accuracy regarding the significant threshold to be fixed, and that's the reason why it's useful to apply a statistical method able to 
take into account intensity variations and most of all the variability variability among experiments. So here we're going to perform this experiment by um, highlighting that box the box area shown. Go up into your um, your add-ins and select SAM. If you haven't done so, you can go to options, select add-ins, and import the R or the SAM file and R file um, to Excel, which you'll need to do if you haven't done that yet. SAM is an Excel macro freely available for academics on the web, and the use of SAM in Excel spreadsheets uh, makes this tool a lot easier for most microarray users. Um, and SAM implies a few modifications in your data file, so I'm going to list those real quick. First, the ratio or intensity values in the Excel sheet must not contain any commas, but only points as decimal separator, as a decimal separator. Um, the head header line depends on the type of analysis you want to perform. You can refer to SAM manual for more information. You must highlight your header if you don't want to lose the experiment information. And two annotation columns are available. Uh, SAM always references its calculations to the line number in the departure sheet, which were, uh, which were those one and two at the top of the table. So again, highlight the area shown, and in the add-ins tab, select SAM. Now a pop-up box will appear. Further information on various options you can choose, it's best to refer to the SAM manual. However, the first important thing to do is to indicate if the data source has been transformed into log2 or not. In this case, we will select unlogged. Then as data bootstrapping uses a gener random generator, you need to initialize it several times by selecting generate random seed once it's fine. Um, click OK. Once all of the chosen iterations have been done, SAM displays a plot representing each gene in reference to its score in the real distribution compared to the random distributions. Therefore, the differentially expressed genes are the ones moving away from the 45 degree slope line, farther away. Um, the table that appears indicates for each delta value the number of putative differentially expressed genes, the significant genes, and the number of false positive genes estimated um, using the false discovery rate. The user can change the delta value according to the number of false positives or significant genes he or she wants to obtain. Uh, choose a delta value by manually, uh, by selecting manually enter delta, enter your own delta value between 0 and 0 0.25. Uh, then if you select list significant genes button, SAM displays the list of differentially expressed genes in the SAM output sheet according to the delta value you chose. Uh, this sheet summarizes the selected parameters and gives you the list of induced and repressed genes, which is most of the data looked at in microarray experiments.